Konnichiwa, Closeteers! On this Tearless Tuesday, I'm coming at you from the digital world. We'll be tackling the traveling companions from L. Frank Baum's immortal classic series of Oz, ranking them on how much I, Daniel McFlannel, would want them in my party for the adventure. The land of Oz is filled to the brim with strange places and strange freaks, some friendly and some not so much. Having a crew is valuable, so consider this a guide when you find yourself not in Kansas anymore. Just to be clear to the people in the audience who can't read, I won't be including Dorothy or the Gnome King. Also, I'm only doing the first six books because L. Frank Baum totally sold out after. I originally planned to shoot this video on a hot air balloon, though I've got a lifetime ban from cutting the mooring line. Instead, I'll show off some priceless Oz artifacts and review Friar Cluck's new Burned at the Stake Hot Wings. So stay tuned, stay hydrated, and enjoy the ride along the yellow brick road. <sighs> All right, we'll start with a simple one. Toto. A non-speaking dog in Oz is kind of the definition of C-tier. Let's not kid ourselves. But, 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 Toto's got a lot of clout and did come in handy revealing that lying wizard's true self. Everything you say about me is true! So he's going in B-tier. C-tier won't be empty for long, though, because next up is Ambi Ambi, the army of the Emerald City. If you're a level one munchkin, you probably don't know him by name because he's isn't in the movie, but Ambi Ambi protects the city with his long beard and... Unloaded gun. Yeah, I'd rather have a dog than a pacifist hipster. For all you 80s babies out there, the Gump will be a familiar sight appearing in the beloved cult classic Return to Oz. A sentient mess of furniture and other random stuff, the Gump is landing an A-tier for two reasons. He can fly, which is a rarity among this group, and he has no will to live, which I'm sure my viewers can relate to. Next is the Wogglebug. He's a learned insect who got big by being looked at in a magnifying glass. Then he started a college. F. If you read book two, The Marvelous Land of Oz, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, why are you watching this video? Anyway, he's an annoying pseudo-intellectual, and everybody knows it. He kept making puns until they literally threatened him with death. And hey, I'm here for it. Ah! Next up is the Wizard of Oz. Bet she didn't expect him so soon. We'll talk about his early years a little later, but as a traveling companion, I only feel right putting him in B. He lied to the people of Oz. He lied to Dorothy about returning to Kansas, and he sold off the rightful heir to the throne. Ozians live in a paradise and are kind and forgiving. Daniel is not. While I can't deny his capability and clout, he's just another sinner, like me. Give him his sword, I don't care. He pisses me off. B is for Belina. A spunky, sassy, and talkative chicken. She is a special case, essentially a better Toto, because you heard me right. She talks. More importantly, she has a secret weapon defeating those evil gnomes. It's a tough decision, but I have to slot Jack Pumpkinhead in C. There is wiggle room depending on where you find him in his development, whether curious and fresh like the morning dew, or existentially distressed as impending mortality, or a happy landowner. He's pretty clumsy and stupid. That said, if he called me father, I would move mountains for him. <sighs> I suspect this may be controversial for fans of the OG movie, but it's my duty as a reviewer to speak my truth. The cowardly lion is only going in A tier. I can hear the comments now. He's actually brave and really helpful. Well, yeah, he's a lion. Everyone still calls him the cowardly lion, though, so maybe he needed more than just a medal. Next is the hungry tiger, the cowardly lion's counterpart, who shows up in book three for the daytime raid on the Gnome Kingdom. Definitely not cowardly, but I don't trust him. C. Eureka the talking cat is your typical love or hate character. If you love murderous lion cats, and you probably do, sicko, you won't mind that she has no value. C. Zeb and Jim, the two-for-one deal, is a C-tier offering. One's a kid, one's a horse. The kid wrestles a munchkin and loses, and the horse is a dick. Jim loses a race to arguably the best character, so you can kind of give him a pass, but this is a trap pick. And who was the arguably best character? Well, you probably anticipate that I'll tell you at the end, right? And maybe you are. Maybe you are. But 
strong, like always. Our first of four S-tier characters is here. My favorite, the untiring Sawhorse. Fast, dependable, and deceptively wise, he's the George Harrison of the S-tiers. In my flaming forum wars with other Bombros, he was consistently underrated and doesn't even have his own Wikipedia page. Who do you think chased down Mombi in the deadly, I repeat, deadly desert? Whoever touches it dies, comprende? Underrated and underutilized. The Santa Claus sat on him in book five. Next. Phew. That was a lot, I'm sure my viewers are saying. How does he do it, they say. He won't bring out another S tier so soon. He wants to stretch it out for proper tension or whatever. That's what you're all thinking, I'm sure. But wrong again! Because S tier number two is the remarkable genius and former ruler of Oz, the Scarecrow! He's the fan favorite and I totally get it. Holler in the comments if you're a fellow love crow. Do you really need me to tell you why he's S tier? He peaks in the original Wizard of Oz, I'd say. Come along, Dorothy. You don't want any of those apples. Hmm. Are you hitting my apples on what they ought to be? Oh, no. It's just that she doesn't like little green worms. Oh, you. <laughs> He does get ousted from his kingdom pretty much immediately by General Ginger and a girl army. Like several of the others, he's basically immortal, and he's a rare long-range combatant. They can't all be winners, though. Aunt M and Uncle Henry are the textbook D-tier. Old people are a double-edged sword, and these two can't handle Oz too well. It would be cruel to separate them, so they're also a package deal. Of all the useless characters you could have in your party, Button Bright has to take the cake. He doesn't know anything. And people love him. What a sick joke. You're telling me. You're telling me. The Shaggy Man is tough. A kindly old wandering hobo. He is hard to grade because he goes through the story with a love magnet, which ups his charisma tremendously. I don't know if he could have charmed the Fox King of Foxville without it. Anyways, for the sake of this, he won't be with the magnet. So I'm going to leave him in D. There are worse options. Okay. Polychrome. The twirling passive cloud fairy. She appears in book five with Button Bright and the Shaggy Man, objectively the all time worst party comp. She dances around in key reflective moments, if you need that sort of thing. Strange choice if you pick her, is all I'm saying. I wouldn't want to be caught with her and the Shaggy Man on an adventure. The A tier is looking a little lonely, so here strides TikTok, the flawed masterpiece. If only you didn't need to wind up his thought, action, and speech, he'd be perfect. Unkillable, strong and reliable, TikTok is still a choice pick. Personally, I'd imagine he'd carry me in his arms and I could keep him running all the time. And swooping down to S tier, the easiest decision of my life is the rightful ruler of Oz. Yes, she is a companion. The marvelous Princess Ozma. Being real now, if there are people that like The Wizard of Oz, the second and third books are oddities worth reading. Four through six are plain oddities. Do you really lack the attention span to read a children's chapter book? They're short, and they even have weird pictures. You can easily read them for free online. It won't take you that long. Read the first book, too. Or how long can it take to read the Wikipedia summary? Assholes. Anyways, you should have read the books to know why she's an easy ass. One note, she usually would come with a retinue, which would include Ambi Ambi, Jack Pumpkinhead probably Lion Tiger, and other oddballs. Because Ozma is so powerful already, I'm just gonna say she's alone for this journey. Before I reveal the final pick, and yes, the final S, let's try some chicken and check some relics, shall we? Hey guys, real life Dan here. As you can see, I've got some interesting items to inspect, for which I'll be wearing some gloves to protect the relics for future generations to come. But first, we will be eating chicken. Mmm, yummy! I'm so excited to try this. Mmm. I'd call that a buy. So this is a spellbinding necklace and ring. Some things I've always wanted. My Christmas list 
don't seem to get looked at as frequently as it used to, but we're makers of our own destiny. So I've gotten this off eBay. Let's take a look, shall we? Oh, well, that's cool. Then uh, a nice little ring. I'll wear this for the rest of the review. You won't see it, but apparently you can change the color. Good enough. And then finally, we have this little heart-shaped apple. I guess they're including Snow White in there now. Ooh, here's a real beauty though. TikTok of Oz, this is the eighth book in the series, if I'm correct. And are we? Spoilers! <laughs> Maybe someday there'll be a part two video. But first, we'll take a look at uh, the Tin Woodman of Oz. Hmm. He's an interesting character, I, I believe. Polychrome, hey. That's a name you guys know, even. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. So, we return to the final pick of the list, the ultimate S. I bet so many of you feel like they know what the pick is. Even people that only vaguely know the Oz series can realize I haven't talked about a certain important character. <laughs> Sigh, you got me. You're all too clever for me, you know? But is there any doubt? Are you really sure? What if your life was on the line? You can just concede, and I'll forgive you. Ah, or you can call my bluff. Yeah, I kind of spoiled it earlier. General Ginger, you fools ain't got nothing on the D-hound, baby. Heh, <laughs> good thing we weren't playing for anything important now, kid. Before all the bomb bros storm my comments. Yes, she counts. Ozma briefly joins her warband on the way to the Emerald City. In this case, I think she gets her army for narrative reasons. Why else would she be there? I'm a feminist. Well, that was fun. Here's a cost chart for you to make your own Oz traveling party. Post your parties in the comments. Oh wait, I forgot somebody. Warrior Mouse! He's the hard counter to General Ginger's entire army, despite being D tier otherwise, which has got to bring down Ginger to an A. Wait, that means there's still an S tier character missing, but I can't remember- Tin Woodman! The S to end all S's in this humble reviewer's opinion. The strongest, most durable pick of the bunch, who has a gentle mind to match his vast, ticking heart. The Tin Woodman comes with a weapon, which is seriously cool. He is also the ruler of the Winkies, did you know? But his wisdom and philosophy are the real reasons to pick him. Sometimes I've felt heartless and empty. Day in, day out, going through the same motions until I'm rusted in place, growing stagnant and alone, full of resentment, tormented by intrusive thoughts like flying monkeys, I'm beaten to become as wicked and apathetic as a blunt axe. In times like these, only thoughts of the Tin Woodmen have saved me. He was like me, but he traveled into certain doom to see if he could still be alive, to see if he wasn't too far gone, to see if miracles can happen. They don't happen, yet even the false prophet is wise enough to know the truth. You are alive as long as you feel your heart beat. Your heart beats because it still believes in you, because it wants you to continue. Each bump bump is a message saying, I want to live. So yeah, the Tin Woodman is pretty cool. Dorothy's A for all you freaks that care. All right, I'll be coming out of the closet with another review for you soon. For now, scram.